Thank you, Sanchez, for my kind introduction. So you have seen my world is not only automotive. I had also a long story in security. But today, and I would like to thank Cadence for this opportunity for the semiconductor supplier like Infineon has, uh, can provide for few how we see the automotive industry changing. And that's the main topic which I would like to share with you today. And uh, I said also it's a fast changing um, industry. Means the interesting slide from Sanjay at the beginning. If we talk about innovation, if we talk about uh, driving the semiconductor industry, it was always more the IT industry which was always leading. But I think the picture is now changing here, and the picture you just see quite often is that besides IoT, besides mobile phone, you see also now cars, automotive appearing in such kind of slides. I think this is not very long ago that we had slides without automotive industry and such kind of things. And this is now happening across the whole industry. So it's not only, let's say, newcomers. Newcomers means uh, game changers in the automotive industries or premium um, uh, OEMs who are driving innovation very strongly. Also the big one, and I would like to show you one statement from the CEO from uh, General Motors, which is normally considered more a conservative uh, manufacturer. She is saying that the next five to 10 years, the automotive industry is changing more than we were experiencing the last 50 years. And I think this is proving again that the whole automotive industry is changing quite dramatically. And therefore we see not only one topic which is uh, changing in the industry. And we as a semiconductor supplier, this is the good news for all of us, that the innovation is, and this is a statement also from an OEM, 80% of this new innovation is coming from semiconductors. So we are the reason that this industry is changing so much. So let's have a look. What are the changes? What are the mega trends in the automotive industries? And the semiconductors are essential to drive the e-mobility. This is now happening since a while already. And I would say this is not only a trend, this is now fact. We will see the change from the combustion engine to the electric drive. It will be not a sudden change. We will see the next 10 to 20 years a very colorful, let's say, picture of different kind of drives, different kind of, let's say, combination of uh, e-drive and combustion engine. The next trend which is coming very strongly now into the market is that we want to be supported in driving the car. So ADAS functions are becoming a common feature in the car. And the final target is that we have automated driving. Automated driving means that we can do something else. The car is doing the job. What was also shown in the slides before by Tom and Sanjay is that we are generating a lot of data in the car. We are talking about terabytes of data which are generated in the car. Today, mainly the data are staying in the car. We are not leaving the car. And it's a treasure box. And I think this is at the moment the war I see in the industry. Who can open this treasure box and can use these data? So this will be quite interesting. It's not only something that... Uh, Third parties are very much interested in. Also, we as a user, we would like to have more, let's say, use cases of these data which we are generating in the car. Having the car connected, there is an immediate second step to be done, and this is we have to make the car very secure. Because what we experience since decades, meanwhile, in the IoT industry or in the normal uh, computing industry, hackers will also attack cars, and this is what we will see. And we as a semiconductor supplier, we are responsible to make these cars now cleaner, safer, and smarter. It's, it's showing also in the market already that this is an interesting market, and this is also why many people are going into the automotive market, because meanwhile, not in absolute numbers in terms of growth, the automotive market is the biggest growth market in the semiconductor industry. That's the reason why so many also new players are coming into the automotive industry trying to sell their products. For these people who don't know uh, Infineon, just one slide means we are focusing very much on three segments, automotive, power-related uh, applications, and security applications. And you see also how important for us the automotive market is. 43% of our revenue is in the automotive spectrum. 
And we also don't see us only as a specialist. We want to be, and we are, the most, I would say, the broadest uh, portfolio we are offering for the automotive industry. And you know the typical cycle in the automotive industry? This is sensing, computing, and actuation. And this is what we are offering. We have a whole portfolio from all the different kinds of sensors we need in the car, the different kinds of computers, microcontrollers today mainly, and all the different kinds of actuation to make these actions happen uh, in the car. And this has to be also integrated now more and more. So therefore, we talk more about chipsets. We talk more about integrated solutions, which are also secure. So therefore, I would like to touch now how we see these megatrends uh, turning into yeah, beliefs. And beliefs means we will see zero two becomes real. So that means, in consequence, what we see today, and it's for me also interesting how the young generation is now um, going onto the street. Friday for Future, or Future for Fridays, is here a, a demonstration which shows that the young generation wants to have really CO2 free um, uh, cars on the road here. And therefore, this is something which is now really uh, getting into the right shape. Driver becomes a passenger. This is our next belief. So this is where we see that the society is changing. It's not anymore for us most important to have this car, to drive this car. It will be more important to be, have a mobility service. So mobility service will be, I would say, the future industry. And car is one option to be mobile. And last but not least, we still will have cars. The car will not disappear. I mean, so there are even, let's say, people saying, hey, there is no big future for the car industry. I think a car remains a car and will still be there. It will change inside, it will change in terms of drive, and it will be still a car. Let's touch now a little bit uh, each point for a minute. First point, and I will spend only a few slides, is the electromobility here. We are now in the hockey stick. From last year to the year before, we see a rare big jump. Now, 5.5 million of the cars have an electric drive inside. The bigger portion is still hybrid, but also the pure battery-driven EVs have already a significant size. And we see for the next five years, it really will take off. We will see, um, let's say, around one-third of the fleet which is sold into the market to be electrified. And this is for us, semiconductor industry, a good news, because if you see what is the semiconductor content in the cars, a typical car which you buy today without any electrical drive features has around 375 US dollar semiconductor content inside. If you add a mild hybrid, typically today it's 48 volt based technologies, you add already up to 470 US dollar. Jumping to hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or let's say battery-driven, then we go up to 740, 750 US dollars. So you see, we are doubling the semiconductor content nearly for such kind of cars. And this is why the industry has here a big job to do, technology-wise, cost-wise as well. Uh, and there is also a third point, which is now becoming very critical. And this is, are we able to supply all these components? Because for an electric drive, we need a lot of power components. And this is now just a picture for power components, that means IGBT and MOSFETs, which are consumed in the industry. So 2017, all the cars which have been electrified, they needed one factory in the world to produce all these kind of semiconductors. If we continue now the growth, and I put here a conservative, we call it in our point, base case or base scenario, we see already a quite significant jump next year. And 2025, where we come really into this uh, hockey stick phase, we need in worldwide four factories just producing power semiconductors just for a single market. And these factories have to be in place. And I don't know if everybody knows how long does it take to build a factory, to invest into a factory. And if you take even more aggressive scenarios, which I see uh, in many of the uh, analyst papers from SA or whatever, then we go to the bottom here. When we talk about 
here six to nine factories up to 2030. Factories which have to be in place that you can buy a car which is driving electrically. So that's the reason why we are also investing heavily. So we believe in this kind of industry. We believe that we make uh, zero free cars. This is uh, one more 300 millimeter factory just dedicated to power electronics here. We have already one in Dresden. So this is the second fab in order to fuel exactly this kind of growth which we are seeing. Let me come now to the part which is quite important for our discussion here also. And this is driver becomes a passenger. Means we see all the activities from the car industry to provide that here. I want to test also a little bit how do you feel about that here? Who believes that 2025, just five years down the road, that you will use a car, not buying such a car, but you will use a service provider which is driving automated? Who believes in this kind of picture? Please raise your hand. Okay. I see more of a young generation raising their hand. Could it be that we are still believing in this picture? <laughs> so, I think, the, let's call it the baby boomers. I think here are some, some more baby boomers. So, we had this picture in mind here. What was it? Horsepower. We were believing in sound. Hey. We want to have a good sound. That means we just talked at the beginning. Why do we keep it in this way? Acceleration. But I think who has driven an electrical car, I think, yes, it can be even faster. Maximum speed. Car tuning. And what was at the end what we wanted to have? The freedom. What is now the freedom of the millenniums? Is it this picture? So, we have to see, and I think that's where the car industry has to change. It's, of course, more a joke, this picture, but it gives a certain truth where we see, the, let's say, the priorities changing. The priorities are changing in the millenniums. We are, if you talk to the generation Z, uh, means my kids are in this generation, they have different priorities, and I think this is exactly why we have to change, and therefore we have to provide these things. So I do believe that we will see 2025 the first cars or these kind of mobility services which are driving me autonomously to certain places. For me, it was also quite interesting in the automotive industry, I, it's not so often happening in automotive industry that these industry is sitting together and is defining a standard before the cars are getting on the road. I know this very well from the mobile phone industry. They are doing this quite frequently. In automotive industry, it's slightly different. Normally, you bring the car on the road and then you look for a standard. So therefore, we have here a road. We have a path how we will develop. Therefore, in the next, let's say, five to ten years, we will see the majority of the cars, of course, at the level one and two. We get highly assisted, we get supported, we can reduce the accidents, we can reduce basically um, all these dangerous situations on the roads, and this will help us. But at the end of the day, we will see, and this will be not 100% of the fleet, it will be a certain portion which will also reside on the level four and five. That means the car is taking over the responsibility to drive me to A to B. So good vision, but what does it mean now? And this is exactly where we have to look into. Overall, it doesn't change very much. We do sense, compute, and actuate. So the car still remains a car in a certain way, and also for electronics. But as we are taking the driver out of the responsibility, we have to replace certain things. And that means we have to replace the sensors of the driver. We have to replace the brain. We have to compute this, what the driver is doing today in his brain for reaction. We have to do it in a very safe environment. And last but not least, we have to replace the muscles. Doing the steering wheeling, doing the acceleration. Therefore, we need actuation, which is as good as we are doing it. So in terms of sensing, there's a lot of debates. What are the sensors which are appropriate? What are the best one? Means camera, radar. Also, LiDAR, I would say, is for us the most dominant, but we see also other sensors like microphones coming into 
uh, into, the, uh, into the picture because we're also hearing a lot. Hearing, for example, that there is an uh, emergency um, car coming along here. Means if we have no car to car communication, how else can we communicate? We have to hear also what is happening. And uh, sound is still a very important topic. So we still a lot of new, nice sensors coming into the picture. This is for us good again because sensors will be a very important part into the car. And then the next big portion is, of course, the computing. Uh, Tom showed also some pictures already of, let's say, these kind of technologies which are needed. So besides the microcontroller, which is today the dominating um, architecture, we will see GPUs, we see microprocessors. We need AI in the car. It doesn't mean the, the a car will do AI and will learn certain things by itself. It will be still in a defined and certified environment, but we need this kind of AI capabilities in the cars to optimize the processes. And then we have to actuate, and this is also a big challenge because we have to make sure that the actuation is going to happen. So we cannot say, hey, there was a power failure, I cannot do it, or I have no good communication, or there was a problem. These are scenarios we cannot accept. We have to be as good as a driver like you today. And this is not an easy job. So this is a big challenge for all OEMs to come to that level, what we as a driver today can manage already and be even better. So coming a little bit now into the details. So you see sensors and this is a minimum picture which we will see at the different levels. So there will be also the need for a certain kind of sanitization of sensors in order to have here a common platform, but we need many of these kind of systems. And now the question comes, yeah, how do we verify all that stuff? Historically, the industry, if you talk about an EE architecture, was, um, let's say, developing it more by function. So function was the basis for all these things that we provided in terms of electronics. Then we have realized but there is also quality needed. So not just put a, let's say, a function inside and somehow the semiconductor can do it. We need the right quality. That is what automotive quality is all about. And it's not a ACQ100 only, it's much more nowadays. We talk about zero defect. Parts shall not fail in the specified way. Safety is now the next big animal. Uh, which we are tackling, so mainly also related by functional safety, so to prove it also to the people. What we are now struggling very much is the topic security. This is the next big, big topic which comes into the car. And we have to manage not only in the car, we have to manage in the whole ecosystem. This is where we are going. And then we need also enhanced dependability. So what does it mean now translated here? Functionality was for us the per part can fail. And part fails, okay, this function is not anymore available here. That means there was a downtime, you went into the repair shop, then the part got repaired, and then you could drive again. This is something which I think is not so much anymore visible. We don't see anymore so many cars aside on the highway parking because certain things are broken down, because quality is an important issue for all of us. We want to have quality. We don't want to see these cars are not breaking down. Therefore, what was now the failure behavior we were looking for? This was fail silent. So it breaks, but this doesn't stop the operation. You get a red lamp. You see a nice LED or nowadays on the display, this is not working or that is not working. This is the way how we do it. So reliability and availability is exactly that what and if I am using here the terms of ISO 26262 are getting important. With the increased safety, and this was exactly now the point, that also electronics is replacing safety critical tasks that, uh, let's say, just a red lamp was not good enough anymore, so therefore we need more. We have to have here, clearly as it's written here, uh, unintended deviation, uh, which we have to control. So what is now required in the system, we are talking about fail safe. So if a certain system doesn't go anymore in the right direction, it should not harm you. So harming people like you and me, this is a no-go. And this is what we have to develop. But how do we prove it? Means PowerPoints are very nice. Means everybody has nice PowerPoints. But how can we prove it that this is going to happen? And I use always a simple picture how 
ISO 26062 is doing it. It's not complicated. Many people say, ah, oh, it's such complicated and uh, so many difficulties. But actually, it's a de clearly defined process and we intend to do two tests or two measures. We want to look into systematic failures and we want to look into random failures. And I put here some pictures showing what could be a systematic failure. It means we are using letters to do certain things. I think the left-hand side doesn't look so good. So this is exactly what we want to look. We want to see what is the inherent safety. We want to analyze uh, systematic uh, failures here. And this is what we have to do. There are certain tools in place in order to do so. Random cases are, of course, more difficult. So therefore, we have to build into our devices also features who are allowing us monitoring diagnostic features here. So that's the whole story, what we have to do in the industry in order to achieve this kind of target. And the target means at the end of the day that we have here a clear focus on, let's say, process and diagnostic features to avoid systematic and random faults here. And therefore, we have to start at the lowest layer, and the lowest layer is today in most of these uh, systems a piece of semiconductor. So therefore, we were also working together with all the parties in order to achieve this here, because the semiconductor alone can't do it. So we have to uh, work on, let's say, systems which allow this kind of, let's say, proof to our customer that this is done. So with the ISO 26026 tool, TCL compliance tool from uh, Cadence, we were able to prove to our customer that the development from the first specification up to the final delivery verification, everything was done in order to prove that this kind of systematic failures or random failures can be avoided. Of course, it's not the end of a story. It's a learning process. We will further improve it. But it's important that we are working together along the value chain with all parties in order to prove to our customer, and the end customer is the buyer of a car, that these are really safe systems. But I see in one or two years more people rising their hand because you're not fearing to enter into a self-driving car because we are having the proofs for you. Now... We come to the point of security. Security will be the next challenge. The car will be connected to the IoT, or let's say to the cloud, to the internet, wherever, let's say, people want to have data and exchange data. By that, we will invite other people. And the other people is or are the hackers in this world here. And they will target the cars. If we want or if we don't want, we don't need to ask them, they will come. They will find business cases. So imagine, this is a question which I get sometimes, what is first, safety or security? We would say probably it's safety because we are used to safety. But is security not first? Think about it. If a hacker reprograms your ECU, your breaking ECU, if a hacker is, for example, flooding the canvas with useless data, all the important data are jammed. And these are not difficult tasks. Means if you go on YouTube, you will see many YouTubes already showing these cases here. Imagine that now self-driving car again. We attack your ADA systems. We are attacking all your nice sensors. We are um, attacking all these nice GPUs and uh, manipulate it, whatever we do. Therefore, there is no safety without security. And this is what we have to accept. Security will be a prerequisite for safety. So therefore, there is no question anymore what is first. We have to tackle both topics in the same way as we uh, do safety today. And here, a simple picture. This is your car today. Look on the many interfaces we have. These are the doors in which the hackers will get into your car. I don't know if you have enough, let's say, McAfee's uh, in your car to avoid to filter all these interfaces. I don't think so. So this is what we have to do. And the people will take it. And 
I get reminded a little bit what I was doing 20 years ago as I was programming smart cards. Uh, exactly these kind of things were our principles we have to think. means how we can prevent unintended access, how we can, let's say, detect that somebody is attacking. How can we basically reduce the impact of any uh, vulnerabilities in the health system? Uh, and this kind of security has, and this was a question which I got only a couple of years ago, can I get this kind of, in automotive language, silver box into my car that the car is secure? And I had to say, hey, there will be no silver box, that means no ECU, which is making your car secure. The security is an architectural topic. We have to think about the whole car, all the interfaces, all the gateways, all the networks, all the processing, that means all the ECU, which have to be secure. So it's not a job a, of a person, of a department, it's the job of an OEM to make the car secure. And we, as a semiconductor supplier, we have to enable that. So therefore, some food for thoughts, what is needed. We need standardization. Other industries have shown this already. In the security by obscurity, it's not a solution. Don't tell the people how my security is working. It has to be proven, standardized security. Agility. I don't talk about now R&D agility, because agility is at the moment a buzzword, so we have to be always careful. So I don't talk about agility and scrum. Here I talk about cryptographic agility, because the car will not stay out for two or three years, like your mobile phone or your computers. The cars shall stay 10, 15, 20 years. And these cars have to be still secure. You don't want to see, hey, that's a policeman comes and say, hey, show me your security pass. Oh, you are outdated version. You cannot move this car anymore. Because you are endangering the other car drivers. Because a, and we have seen cars or trucks are meanwhile are used as weapons. If you need today a driver in order to do so, tomorrow you can do it remote. Somewhere Let's say a thousand of kilometers away, you hijack a car and then you use it as a weapon. These scenarios are existing. So therefore, we have to be active, prepare ourselves that these kind of things cannot happen here. Transparency. This is a basic sentence in the security community. We prove to you, we show how security works, how strong are our algorithms. We need hierarchical AE architecture. So, this kind of democratic system we have today, many issues, changing data, this is history. We have to have the domain structures and we have to go even higher and we have really a clear hierarchical structure which has security by default enabled and designed in. And last but not least, we need hardware-based security. So just to put a little bit software inside, this will not solve it. This is what hackers are used to and they will come around. So therefore, we need trusted angles in the cars, like you are used in your passport, but you are used from your bank. That means microcontrollers who have security integrated. Also for outside communication, we need discrete security controllers who keeps the biggest secret, the signatures, your keys in a very safe place. If I get attacked, nobody has access. These are proven technologies from our industry, so you can learn from our industry, and this is we have to bring together. Last slide, I would like to come to a point here because you have seen how many things we have to touch now. And this is the complexity which is at the car industry. So we are changing so many systems. Therefore, we have to think about, as we want to bring all these technology very fast to the market, how can we accelerate that here? Historically, we were designing a chip, then we gave it to the tier one, they did an ECU, the ECU went to the car makers, and then they were testing it in their fields. This is too slow. We have to find ways, and therefore, um, with Cadence, we see here an important partner to make exactly this kind of step uh, possible. We call it, we need a design flow which is living with digital twins. So we have the car in a digital environment already available, even the physical parts are not given. And this is what we have to develop. So we have to develop here design flows, which allows us to have digital twins. So digital twins can be given to tier ones, can be given to OEMs in order to develop or test their system, their functions with all necessary features. 
here's a simple example that you want to test a motor, let's say an e-drive. You can test your algorithm, you can test your application without having the physical hardware available at this point of time you develop all these kind of things. Yeah. This is what is needed and therefore we need a strong alliance here with the ADU uh, tail providers to make these autonomous driving cars really fast to be on the market, safe in terms of operation and secure in terms of that no hacker has the chance to attack it. To summarize it, what you would like to see to be taken away. The automotive market is a big semiconductor market. You have seen uh, only with the XCV and I think also the ADAS topic of autonomous driving, we come up to 100, uh, 1,700 US dollar semiconductor content. ADAS and um, autonomous driving will drive much more semiconductor, more powerful semiconductors and this demand will increase quite dramatically. The car will be part of the IoT and we need security. So without security, we will have no safety. What I see also quite important in uh, this uh, issue is that we need here a modern design flow. We have to work together along the value chain with the ADO tools providers in order to make these kind of developments really safe, so functional safe, and in terms of time to market, so fast that uh, we can enjoy all these nice features at the same time. And this is also why I say at the moment, it's the most exciting time to be in the automotive industry because we have so many changes, and I see changes uh, always as something, as an opportunity, and this is why I like so much this industry right now, and we have to work together that this will be also a bright future, and we can really lay back and that we see in a couple of years more people enjoying autonomous driving. Thank you.